Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Sleep Nanny podcast. Today I am joined by Poppy Owen. She is an amazing mum and a business mentor and coach. She's here today to share with us her unique experience running her own business, juggling motherhood, and that's not even done in the UK most of the time. So Poppy, a huge welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited for this conversation. I feel like there's so much to be said in all of those things. So yeah, really looking forward to just diving straight into that conversation today. Oh, me too. Thank you. So tell us a bit about what got you into your role in in, in business as, as a mentor, as a coach. You know, what was the journey that's led you to life today? Okay, perfect. So my background is marketing um, and then I moved into becoming a makeup artist. So I was a makeup artist and I grew very quickly with that. So it was very much in-person services. Um, After a while, I became a makeup educator. So I started teaching people how to become makeup artists. Very quickly, I grew and got my own premises. So then I moved into yeah my own premises, had staff. Um, built that business and then I also launched my own makeup products uh, my brushes and things like that so I had a in-person service business I had a product-based business all the things I was juggling all the things and then the pandemic hit and that was in the March Um, in the January I'd fell pregnant so um that was planned fine and then yeah come March we had to shut everything down and everyone was like oh my goodness what are we gonna do for money like we can't just stop anyway so I am one of these people as a business owner as an like a serial entrepreneur I cannot just sit around and wait for something to come to me I have to go out and create it and um make moves in in a sense um so this is the point where we have to just kind of stop and wait for the for announcements and things like that so in the meantime i actually built um an online platform so i was teaching people how to do their own makeup and i was doing that from the comfort of my own home through the pandemic and that was actually the beginning of my online business journey so i'd had the in-person had product-based business now it's time for the online. And whilst I was building and creating this platform, I was also pregnant. So um, I knew also in the back of my head, I was thinking, oh my goodness, the, the whole world is in this state and I'm about to bring a baby into this world, not knowing what's happening with my business. And as a business owner, we not, well, don't really know what's coming in month by month. Um, so my blinkers were on with building this online platform because I was yeah. like, I need to get money in for one. Um, but equally, I need to build something that's going to be sustainable for when the baby comes here. Yeah. So, um, so I did that and that actually um, was super, super successful. So um, I escalated into like five figure months, all of these kind of things. And it was great. It was, it was awesome. And then that was up and running by the time October came around I had my baby um but in the back of my mind I was also like I've got a backlog of clients who I need to bring in to do courses with to teach them how to become makeup artists but I also have a newborn baby what do I do with that so after three weeks I went back to work um because I had to at this point yeah there was no other way of delaying in a sense because it was such a backlog um so yeah went back to work sleep deprived after three weeks um having to leave my baby as well was so difficult Mm. and because I'd always had this entrepreneurial mind of yeah, I'll go back to work straight away because it's a huge part of who I am and my purpose. And yeah, it's fine. Ben can look after the baby whilst I'm in work. It's, you know, we'll figure it out. But then you build this attachment on this this thing with your baby and you're like, I can't leave my baby. This is so Mm. hard. So that was really difficult at that point with trying to juggle it all Mm. in a sense. And I, I always feel like when you're sleep deprived, 
you've got brain fog, you, you can't do things properly, you're not concentrating properly and all these things. And yeah, it was really difficult. So um, I'd also had a taste of the online world at this point. Yeah. And I didn't have to be anywhere physical to go and make money. Mm. So it took me about seven months. Um, so when, so my firstborn is called Effie. And um, when Effie was seven months old, I decided, right, no more in-person services. So at that point, I decided to close down. I had like five businesses at this point. <laughs> Closed them all down. Yeah. And I decided to become a mentor. I'd had so much business experience and knowledge and things that I could go and teach people where it just made sense at that point because I wanted to spend so much more time with my baby yeah. and I, w I didn't want to have to commute somewhere to go and make money. Yeah. Um, so yeah, at that point I, I became a mentor and yeah, I got to spend more time with my baby, which is Amazing. great. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, well, there are so many Thanks so much for sharing that story. There's so many things in there that I, I can relate to as a fellow entrepreneurial minded, you know, when you think, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Of course I am. Mm. It's me. Like, yeah, I did. I did some of that too. Working from the back of the car with my baby on the way back from hospital, booking things in because you never really switch that off when you have that mindset. So mm. I know we are a, a breed of our own um, when it comes to that sort of thing, but you're right. It does. It does then change everything when you become a mum and you're like, oh okay I didn't anticipate all of this and you mentioned the sleep there as well like that's you know my journey into the sleep world was similar and I had no real serious thought behind not getting enough sleep I was just like it'd be fine optimistic not a problem yeah. wasn't even bothered about it um so yeah you're right it does it's a shock to the system and it's a whole new way of working but you've pivoted there in two different ways so you pivoted um in becoming a mum and you also pivoted in a pandemic where you know business had to shift in order for you to keep going mm -hmm. and what a result like you um turned what was for many people a really really difficult time into you know you grew you scaled you um you know really took things to the to the next level because of that um which is so commendable and from that you've learned so much that you I'm sure can replicate to some extent and now work online so now you live in Dubai right mm. which is a whole nother world really and bringing up two little ones in in a whole nother country tell us a bit about that yeah, so we, um, well, obviously when I first had Effie um, and I made the transition online, it was starting to get um, a bit easier uh, with things. And then when we decided to have Indy, my second one, she um, she kind of, we, we decided we wanted the kids quite close together because yeah. I'll be honest, I just wanted to get it all out of the way at one time yeah. and then they can both be at nappies in the same time and all the things. Yeah. So that was my um, way of thinking about that. Um, but when we decided to have Indy, um, I think I was seven months pregnant with Indy and my partner, Ben, his best friends were moving out to Dubai. Now they'd had, they'd already been in Dubai for like five years. They came back to the UK, had a family, uh, got married and then um they were moving back to uh to Dubai and I just turned around to Ben and I just recognized that I just wasn't the best version of myself in the UK I was quite overweight I was lacking in energy all the time I ha I actually had major mum guilt because I'd see it's raining outside and I wouldn't want to take Effie outside because I was like the rain just depresses me so yeah. I didn't want to take her outside I didn't want to go outside we were indoors a lot and I just turned around to Ben one day and I said shall we just go to Dubai and just see what it's like and because I'm not happy here and I'm not the best version of myself and I don't think that's gonna get any better especially having two children mm -hmm. um and he just said yeah why not let's just go for it so so I was seven months pregnant with Indy Indy arrived in the 
August, so she's nearly two now, so August, and by the time it was December, we'd upped and gone to December. That's, to Dubai. Uh... Because I think th- the thing is, a lot of people say to me, oh, how do you do that? You know, it's a big jump, and I think the pain was so unbearable staying here, not feeling happy and not the best version of myself that there was no other option for me. Mm. And I think when you decide on something and then the next level is to committing, Mm -hmm. that's just what you're doing. There is no Mm -hmm. question about it. You're just going through step by step by step, like one day at a time, what things need to be done? What do we need to put in place? What do we need to organize? And it's almost like you've got the blinkers on and you're laser focused in as to what you need to do next thing you know you're in Dubai done it. yeah great done yeah. tick <laughs> and you've clearly applied that strategy like you said before when you were developing your online platform you were like okay that's what I'm doing doing it now mm-hmm. you just blink us on follow the steps make it happen and that I think is a real success um attitude anyway because it sounds like you're like me and a fast action taker once you know what you want you just go and you take action and you make it happen and I think that's it is having that clarity and then just yeah committing to the steps seeing yeah. them through so exactly. when you're not second guessing or you know maybe maybe we will maybe we won't you just go right that's what we're doing do it so actually it doesn't have to be that hard does it it's it's just a decision and then yeah. an action and one of the big things for me was okay let's go to Dubai for a couple of years whilst the kids are small mm. because we we knew that education was a big thing for us in terms of where yeah. do, the, do we want them to be educated how do we want them to be educated so we thought let's let's go for a couple of years um and see what it's like but now we've moved there we're nearly two years in it is a case of okay we're absolutely not coming back to the UK Mm -hmm. um but even though the education system in Dubai is really good because it is mainly like private schooling there is no um no government schools or anything like that it's all private so even uh, the the girls are in nursery in Dubai. They still do the curriculum that is um, put in place for, in the schools. So they even begin that in nursery, which is more like um, of the creative side and things yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, so I think now that we, we've been out there a few years, we're definitely not coming back. Mm. <laughs> but the girls love yeah. it. And I think that was one of the big things for me was that, you know, I want to take my children outdoors and be able to play in the park whenever we want and be exposed to sunlight and all these things is that, yeah, I think um, I was holding myself back, but I was equally holding Effie back, you know, from playing outdoors, like in the UK. So I was a big block for Mm -hmm. for all of us, really. Um, And I think, yeah, I just envisioned my children playing outside feeling free and yeah all these things and that that was my vision so that's why Dubai was the the choice amazing and what a you know what a start for them as well to be able to be in an environment where they can have that you know that lifestyle um it's gonna be great for them as well because I don't doubt they will be learning so much about different cultures languages um yeah really diverse which will be powerful for them so good and they're do you know Effie bless her she she's nearly four in October but she comes back and she learns all these new words in different languages and I'm like whoa and she's got like like all her best friends are different different ethnicities and it's so cute to watch um and I just think that's so incredible because that's very like you're limited to that in the UK as well sometimes especially where we are we're in North Wales yeah um so there's yeah not much um diverse cultures mm. going on either so yeah it's it's brilliant yeah. to watch them it's so cool so what do they think about the UK do they do they seem are they like oh this is a bit cold and a bit like green yeah. I mean or are they like do they enjoy the tri- trips back back here 
Yeah, so when when we come back to the UK, they always get excited because they get to see my mum, who they're really close to, which is awesome. Um, but equally, um, so Effie loves wearing jumpers and tights and boots, and she'll wear that in the 50 degree heat in Dubai. So I said... <laughs> you're going to be fine in the UK. You know, yeah. you can wear all of that stuff in the UK because you'll be jumping in puddles and all sorts. So yeah, they love it. They love like wearing coats and yeah. uh, getting muddy and messy and all of that. So yeah, they, they love it. But we, since moving to Dubai, we have spent our summers in the UK. So yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's a nice uh, change. It's best of them. both worlds, isn't it? Yeah. Because you pretty much get summer all year round um and escape the 50 degree heat um you know in the UK summertime by being here where it's a bit more tolerable (laughs) and then you get to go and escape our long gray winter UK winters and be in the sunshine so um sounds pretty perfect to me (laughs) no it's worked out really well and so having a business that allows you to do that has got to be, I mean, you said your husband's in a similar um, position with his work, so you can take it wherever you go. So it's not a case of down tools. You just, it's a change of location and that's it and carry on. Um, I, I presume that brings about a certain amount of versatility as well, but with who you work with and their time zones and the times that you're connecting with different people around the world. Um, I imagine that's, there's lots of benefits to that and managing your business around your family um yeah. how do you find how do you find that juggle lots of us mums I think all mums are juggling a lot of things regardless of their their work or, or whatever we all juggle all the things but yeah how do you how do you find that with I think when when the kids were small my approach to it was I'll work in their nap times yeah because like I think one of, part of me of building an online business was because I wanted to spend more time with the kids but then I knew that I had work to do so when was I going to fit that in so it was a case of right nap time and actually I scheduled a lot of my calls in the evening when the kids were in bed um so we uh we managed to navigate that pretty well from a young age but now um yeah it it very the thing is with our business structure we design our business around our life Mm-hmm. which is what I don't think many business owners tend to do because I fell in that trap was that you build out the business and you have this desire to grow it and get great income and you know all of those things and then anything to do with your life gets fit in yeah. around your business and then you get the the scraps uh Mm. for yourself you know any slithers of time is normally the last priority whereas the way I do things and my partner does things and we teach clients this as well is build your life first and how you want that to look like and then build your structure to support Mm -hmm. it Mm. so for example if we've got anything going on in our life or anything to do with the kids that goes in the diary first as a first priority Mm. then everything else like even client calls and things like that, they schedule it in around anything that we've put in the diary for our life. Um, And that tends to work really well because we ultimately feel fulfilled, kids are happy, and then our clients are getting supported as well. So Yeah. yeah, we navigated that way because I feel like so many other people do it the opposite and then they, they struggle and then they're like, Oh, I've got this great business, but I'm not feeling fulfilled because it's consuming you and yeah and then you're like where did I start this in the first place (laughs) I think that's so common though I think that is really really common I think most people do when they go into business they don't realize that especially initially if you're on your own and it's a solo business you're going to be doing all the things wearing all the hats um it's full on it's not for the faint-hearted but then if you don't put in those kinds of structures disciplines and things you end up not creating the life and the reason you set about being in business for yourself in the first place. Do you have to think, like, do you have to be um, sort of disciplined with boundaries in terms of, for instance, if I put life first entirely, I'd be concerned that I wouldn't have any time for work and that it would just take up all my time. So on the flip side of rather than not going the other way, um, do you, do you kind of allocate a certain amount of time for work? It's just like you say, a case of then it fits around. Like you said, it has to support 
the life yeah. um, rather than, well, I'm free, I'll do some work. So yeah, how do you structure that so that you don't um, let the work drop? Yeah, of course. So the big thing for me is my work and my business is a huge part of my purpose. Mm-hmm. It's, it's actually a lot of who I am. So yeah. I enjoy it so much that I sometimes prioritize that as a like yeah. a thing to do because it, love it. And it enables me to be feel fulfilled. Like if I go a day without doing any work, that does not make me happy. Mm. <laughs> like mm. so even on a weekend, like I, I don't even class weekends as we weekends as we're taught to take time off. It's just like I've got a routine yeah. and business is just a part of that. Yeah. So it depends on like how you feel about work in a sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I I would class myself as the boundary queen <laughs> because I am so boundaried. And my partner says this about me all the time. Like I'm level four boundary. Like I, if no means no, that's it. Um, but this is the thing as well is that the people who struggle with boundaries, they're just essentially people pleasers. And Mm. the only people that I, as a priority, really care about happiness and everything is my family first, client second, and then everyone else after that. So um, boundaries are so, so important. But this is where the structure lies as well. It's like, how much time do you want to dedicate towards your life? But how much do you want to dedicate it to work? And then a lot of people say like, oh, well, I just don't have the time. And it's it's not a case that you don't have it. It's just you're not structuring it and you're not put, uh, creating it because all we have to do is just look at our diaries to see what structure is available to us and then designing it based on how we want to live our life. Like how much time do you want to spend doing, spending time with loved ones and how much do you want to spend on your business? Mm-hmm. I think you do have to get a real clear vision um around what that looks like but a lot of us we put things on our to-do list that actually don't really need to be done it's very Mm. fluffy things that Mm. are on our list where we think that we need to do but they actually don't move the needle in our business Uh, they're just there to make it look like we're busy um, Mm. and to procrastinate on doing more of the things in the business that will move the needle forward whether it be revenue or client support or uh, client results whatever it is so Mm. it's just a case of well, if you actually cut out all the stuff that you don't really need to do, mm. you, you can act, you probably work less and spend more time with your loved ones. So yeah, it's just about having a clear vision, being really hard with yourself in terms of, do I need to do that? Yes, no. Mm. And then allocating that. I think there's a lot of emotion can come into that as well because we can feel like you say there is often the busy work on the list that isn't actually that important isn't going to move the needle but we for some reason feel that we must do or that if we don't I don't know just not wanting to be lazy or Mm. um, if something isn't where it needs to be with the business you're almost like well I better do something otherwise I feel guilty and actually maybe the most productive thing you could do would be to go for a lovely long walk um but so it's that there is there is that emotion and I definitely um hear you when you say about the, the people pleasing um it's like so many of us do that without even realizing it because we're so um, well, quite often because we are givers and we want people to be satisfied and we want to deliver a great service, whatever that may look like. Yeah. Um, but then we end up firefighting other people's priorities and not actually uh, remembering our own and, and sometimes even burning out in the process. So it's such a good reminder. Yeah, and I think I see a lot of mums um, who they have their babies they perhaps have left corporate or they're on maternity leave and they're thinking, oh, what's next for me? I don't want to go back to that. I want, you know, I want to pivot. I want to change now. I want to do something that allows me to have that time because they then do have, like you say, that bond that they go, oh my goodness, this has taken away, you know, taken over my world. I, I, I can't go back. Um, we see lots of people like that coming towards us when they're looking for something and the franchise is a great opportunity for them. Um, I think that, with that you've got the can I juggle this uh 
you know, can I juggle this and can I juggle the time? But also it's the, you said about who I am, it's who I am. I love my work. I love what I do. It's part of who I am. I'm the same. I'm like, I don't have weekends. I just, it's a different day of the week. The kids are home from school. It's just different. The structure's different. Um, when you love what you do, you want to pick it up and, and keep moving the needle forward. But for mums who maybe maybe there are mums listening that are thinking, wow, I would love my own business or I would love to start something that I feel that way about, that is who I am, that aligns with my purpose, my meaning, the reason I'm here on this planet. Um, but it's not something that they just have always had in them, like the likes of you or I, but they're now going, ah, wait, what is that? Like, where, where does, where does a mum who's possibly also in the midst of mum fog, baby brain, um, and not sure what she wants to do, like, where do you start peeling back the layers to find, to find that if you have no idea? I think the first thing is definitely identifying what makes you happy. Mm. I think as when you become a mum, I ex definitely experienced this with my first is that it's almost like I did. I just didn't know who I was anymore. Yeah. It was like I'd lost all sense of identity. Mm. And I know that like a lot of people say that when they become mums, but I, I didn't believe it. I'm, I'm not mm. going to lie. I didn't believe it. I was like, no, I'll be fine. Yeah. I'll just crack on and, you know, just keep doing my business. And uh, no, like I, I didn't feel good. I didn't look good. I was so burnt out. And for me, like sleep was a big thing because I was, um, I loved my lions and I loved going to bed early and, you know, and then when a baby comes along and you get deprived of that, it's like, oh, okay. And then you're just not the best version of yourself. So I kind of, I did lose who I was, but actually what I had to do was uh, reconnect with like, okay, so if I had an hour, what would I do with that time? Hmm. And it's like, I had to really check in with myself. It's like, well, if I could do anything, what would I do? Mm. First day I started then, it's, it's almost like rediscovering yourself and like, mm. and um, this is what I, I mean, this is what I do with clients in a sense is like finding their zone of genius. Mm -hmm. So the zone of genius is about finding what you really, first of all, what you're really, really passionate about. And it could be something that you do as a hobby or you have an interest in, or um you just do without even thinking that it's a thing mm. that's that's where a lot of zona genius is sort of found is that um if someone says oh you know um i just i i do yoga every morning and i really love it it's just something that i do and people are like oh my god i'd love to do yoga and how you do it and all of and then you think oh mm. actually well people would love to do it i'm good at it so mm. you know so it's identifying what you're really good at um what do you find ultimately fulfilling and what can you see yourself doing I have the so I teach just clients and it's the becoming famous theory and it's about if you were to stand on stage in five years time what would you want to be known for and what mm. topic would you be speaking about or telling the audience about and mm. that's what you want to be known for in this world and and then it really kind of blocks out all the fuzziness, fuzziness of like all the things you could potentially do. But mm. if you had to be known for one thing, what would that be? Mm. Um, and that's really helpful sometimes to think about it like that. But ultimately, it's just a lot of people do think, oh, I want to do this really big thing. But it's so far away from where I am. I'm just not going to do anything. Because they get so overwhelmed with the process of building a business or starting somewhere where they think, oh, that could never happen for me or, you know, whereas if you take a business opportunity or you're thinking of starting a business or anything, and if you just focus on the first thing that you need to do in order to move the needle and yeah. just start there without even thinking of any of the other steps, you're going to get there way much quicker than what you would with having a huge massive vision of what you yeah. want to do um because you're more likely to do one thing at a time rather than 20 things at a time so yeah, yeah one step at a time is always good and it might even just be like having a conversation with so and so or yeah. filling out a form or finding more information out on something and just yeah. one step at a time 
most yeah. of the time. I also I love that, and I also think if um, if you know what you would do if you never had to work another day, like if there was no money involved, if it wasn't for yeah, you never needed to make any more money, what would you then do? Because I know there are people out there that would be like, oh, brilliant, I would literally just be a lady of luxury, and I wouldn't do anything. That's not me, and I think there's lots of people who would be like, oh no, I'd need to, and then you start to see what you've always dreamt of doing. You know, it may be that you would become a something or write a book or you know the things that you just think that are out of reach because you're living for the money the paycheck but actually what would you do if you didn't have to get paid for it I think there's a lot of secrets behind that and it's like oh maybe that's where your alignment is <laughs> what you really ought to be yeah moving into yeah it's just your your ultimate sense of purpose yeah. And that's when you then find the thing that you want to do anyway. You want to do even when you're not working, which is inevitably going to fit around your life. So because it is yeah. your life, it's part of your life. 100%. And mm. I think that's something I identified with myself was that when I wanted to become a mentor, I was thinking like, I get stopped left, right and centre to have a conversation. Oh, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Da, 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 yeah. da, da, or, oh, can, can I, I pick your brains? brains? Yeah, yeah. That's another one. Um, <laughs> And I was just doing this anyway. I was just mentoring mm -hmm. people anyway. Yeah. And even people who were coming on my makeup courses, I would help them build a business afterwards and things like that. So it just made sense. So I, if I am willing to do this for free, then that's yeah. how I knew that I was meant to become a mentor. So yeah. um yeah, if you think, yeah, if you could do anything and you were you were gonna be doing it for free, what would you be doing? And yeah. then um yeah putting some money yeah. on it <laughs> yeah exactly and then there is that investment you do need to invest in yourself it doesn't you know yes we do live in an age where you can learn and find so much out via the internet we've got youtube we you know there's so much you can learn but a business isn't starting your own business doesn't come for free and you're going to invest in learning you're going to invest in you know tooling yourself up to be able to then go and make money um, but that doesn't have to be unattainable. And I think sometimes, again, people put, they think that they think it's unattainable. They think it's going to cost too much in time or in revenue, or, sorry, or in cost in, in money, but it actually doesn't have to, like you said, it's just one step at a time and you'll get there. Well, the reason why people need to invest in themselves is essentially you have all the information that you ever need in order to start a business. Mm. You've got all the knowledge, you probably have all the knowledge to to build what you want to build so what's the reason why you haven't yet mm. and the big the big reason for investment is because when you invest in yourself there's a consequence as to when you don't do the work so when mm. you don't do the work your your investment just flitters away right where yeah. and it becomes a cost because you're not yeah. willing to take the action whereas when you have access to free information like google for example, you're not likely to go and do the thing and be disciplined enough because there's no consequence to you not doing that thing or not building the business. Mm. So the reason for investment as well is because you, when you are held accountable, it's almost like you've got homework to do and, and mm. you've got a teacher being like, where's that homework? And you're yeah. like, oh God, I need to yeah. I need to get it in. I need to do it. I need to move the needle forward. And, and just having that guidance, it yeah. just keeps you held at the highest standard for yourself. Yeah. Because when you're a mum, when you've got all these things going on, you're probably not disciplined to to what you want to be. Mm. Um, and you don't have that self-accountability because you're holding everyone else accountable you're yeah. holding kids accountable to do the things that they say that they're going to do and your partner and all of these things and but who's doing that for you yeah you know so it's when you do invest and you have guidance and things like that you're having someone else hold you at the highest standard of yourself so you mm. do the things that you say that you're going to go and do yeah a lot of these people especially like in my world like the women who come to me for mentorship they probably know what they need to do, hmm. but they just need to be held accountable and just want to know what that next step is so that hmm. they don't have to use a lot of brain space to even think about what that look would look like hmm. um, so that they can just go and take action. 
Yeah. So that's where a lot of people hold themselves back when it comes to investment is the fact that, yeah, they, um, they're not disciplined enough to go and yeah. do the thing. Do you work with a particular uh, demographic or level of entrepreneur or, you know, it's, yeah, you tell me, like, is it, is it specific or is it quite broad? So Who I've do got you work kind of with? like two different avenues. So yeah. when it comes to one-to-one, my my niche is normally the women who have had a service-based business mm-hmm. for years on end and then they've wanted to move into the online space mm-hmm. so that they take the skills and the knowledge and create offers in the online world so that they can yeah. go and serve others with the knowledge that they have. Yeah. And then I've got another side of the business which I'm launching soon. Um, it's called the Dream Life Collective. And this is um essentially a membership where um mainly like online business owners can enter a space and they can learn things around personal development, uh business um wellness and how to structure their life so that they can then go and live their dream life it's it's um essentially a collective and a collaborative space so that they can what so the, what i find is business women they have all these different things in their life that they want to elevate so whether it be transform their body so that they feel good or um you know tweak their mindset so that they can overcome blocks and um figure things out or it might just be business growth they're like right I'm looking to ramp up my revenue now um how do I go and do that and it could be just building a life around children a lot you know as a mum um moving away for example like how do they navigate that so I'm building a space where it has all of that combined in a community and Uh, a space for people to as well pitch their services and uh, things online as well which is awesome but so yeah yeah, so essentially the membership is for like online business owners and then my one-to-one is more for the people who have got a range of knowledge in something and then they want to move their business online become mentors become experts in their field um, and just do things online so they're my kind of like two niches fantastic oh amazing amazing I'm loving loving talking to you about this and what you do it's so great like I I think it's a lovely message for more mums to hear what's possible for them and to open open mums minds not just mums dads as well but I know we do have a heavier mum audience um but the just to know that becoming mum is a part of you. It doesn't have to be all of you. And, you know, inside of all of us is all kinds of different wonderful women who are more than mum alone. I don't like the word just, not just mum, but we're more than mum. We, we're ourselves as well. And you can lose your way with that. You can forget that what that looks like, especially if you took five years off until they went to school and then went, mm, now what? Um, it's never too late. There's always, uh, you know, the unlocking of who you are and, and what you're meant to be, do and have in this world. And I think there's, um, it's so lovely to have this conversation and share that experience with our audience and hopefully inspire uh, some some action. So yeah, thank you, Poppy, for deep diving on this and, and sharing your experience too from as a mum. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course. No, it's been, it's been awesome. So if we have anyone that's looking for your kind of help and that would love to reach out to you um, or wants to ask you any questions, um, we'll put the links obviously in the show notes, but where, where do you hang out most? Where's the best place for people to connect? I'm an Instagram girly, so yeah. uh, you can just find me on there as Poppy Owen. And um, Great. yeah, feel free to send any DMs or any takeaways that you've had from this podcast. That would be awesome amazing go and do that check out poppy owen on instagram poppy once again thank you so much thank you so much just gonna hit stop here we go